Okay, so um, I'm going to look at here now is this example that we did earlier. So this one here, example A. Okay, I'm going to zoom back in here or zoom back out. Okay, so example A. We've got these numbers here. Well, I'm going to take a look at just the X and Y portion of it. So imagining that it's a line in two dimensions. Okay, so we're going to take a look at that. We're going to take a step back to R2 and look at this. And in R2, we've got X minus two y, uh, 2T and Y minus y, plus, y equals 2 plus 3T, where R0 in two dimensions would be 1, 2. M is negative 2, 3. And we want to convert this to Cartesian form. There's uh, a couple ways that we already know of to do this. One is using the slope. So the m, you can get the slope is 3 over negative 2. And then you could write y equals 3 over negative 2 plus b. And sub in the point to solve for b. <clears throat> or find a vector perpendicular to this line, which is the normal. So that would be 3, 2. If you just flip these coordinates and make one negative, so a normal would be 3, 2. And then you'd have the, the from the normal you have the a and the b in that in the uh, Cartesian form. So you'd have 3x plus 2y plus c equals zero. And you find the c by plugging in the one two. So we've done that before. However, now we, I'm going to ask you to do this in a different way. So we're going to, going to convert to Cartesian form by solving for t first in each one. Okay. So for the first one. If you've got y equal or x equal to 1 minus 2t, you can rearrange that to t equals x minus 1 over negative 2. Bring the 1 over, so it's x minus 1, divide by negative 2. Okay, do the same thing for the y, and you get 2 plus 3t uh, turns into t equals y minus 2 over 3. And hopefully by observing these, you notice something where these numbers are compared to what vectors they come from. Okay, so you've got the 1 and the 2, 1 and the 2. Opposite signs here though. And the negative 2 and the 3 happen to be on the bottom. They were the coefficients of t, which was from the direction vector. Okay, so now we can go to a grade 10 method for looking at this. So Grade 10 uses uh, elimination, substitution, and comparison. So comparison is a method of substitution where you take this expression here and sub it in for t up there. Because at any point on the line, the t values must be the same. Okay, so play, take that, put it up there, and you've got this form. Okay, soon we're going to be calling this the symmetric form. So we might as well call it that now. So this is the symmetric form of a line. We don't really use symmetric form of a line in two dimensions, though, um, because we can go further with this. We have one equal sign. We got the top numbers come from R naught. The bottom ones come from M. But if we simplify that by cross multiplying, the three up, the negative two up, okay, then we get this nice simplification here. We multiply that out. Bring the terms to one side and you've got the Cartesian form of the line. Okay, so now let's step back into the three-dimensional world here. So that is just part of that example A. Okay, so I'm going to remind you of what that example looks like here. Okay, so it is right here with the parametric equations right here. So we use the first two on that one. Now we're going to incorporate the third one. Okay, so now we're going to extend into R3. So example A continue. Well, let's look at the Z one. Let's solve for T in that one. Okay, so if you solve for T in that one, you get Z equals 3 plus 5T. It turns into T equals Z minus 3 over 5. Now when we compare all three, we get something that looks a little more complex to solve. Okay, so we get this equation here, x minus 1 over negative 2, okay, so that's from 
all the way up here, where our expression for t when we looked at the x-coordinate equals y minus 2 over 3. Okay, so we just have this, par this part of the equation right here, right now. And then we've got to add in an equal sign for the z. So z minus 3 over 5 here comes from this expression for t. Okay, this can't be simplified at this point. We've got two equal signs. We can't rearrange and get one equation where there's one equal sign. So we call these the symmetric equations now. And this is the best you can do. So we don't get a Cartesian equation of a line in three dimensions because we can't simplify this. We could in two dimensions because there's one equal sign. In three dimensions, we can't because we get two equal signs when we try to simplify this. Okay? So this is called the symmetric equations. And the symmetric equations are generally written like this. Okay? So the symmetric equations are x minus x naught over a, y minus y naught over b, and z minus z naught over c with equal signs in there. ABC is a direction vector, so that's m. X naught, y naught, z naught is the point, the fixed point on the line. Okay, and notice you got minuses here. Okay, so you got to make sure we have those in uh, intact when we look at this. Okay, so some examples. Now the symmetric equations of the line. So we want the symmetric equations of the line that is through for a. Let's look at example a here through the point 2, 11, negative 9 and parallel, that's my symbol for parallel, to 1, negative 1, 5. Okay, so I randomly chose these, so it's through that point and parallel to that vector. So that would be this, x minus 2 over 1, so we put all the, the direction vector numbers on the bottom, 1, negative 1, 5, and we put the point numbers on the top, so x minus 2, y minus 11, and z plus 9, okay, they're opposite signs. This is where there's a lot of mistakes made. If I gave you just a symmetric equation and asked you for a point on the line, I often get negative 2, negative 11, 9 but hopefully now you won't make that mistake because it's going to be the opposite signs of those. It's 2, 11, negative 9. Okay? Now what about this one? So through the point 1, negative 3, 2 and perpendicular to the vectors 1, 2, 1 and negative 3, 2, negative 1. Okay, so we want it perpendicular to both those vectors. So how do we find a vector that is perpendicular to two vectors? We use the cross product. Okay, so the cross product will give us. So m, I'm start, I'm saying m here is the cross product of these two. So you work out the cross product, you get negative four, negative two, and eight. We could have said k times m, which would have meant that we could have used the reduced version of this. Okay, we could have said that the the direction vector was negative 2, negative 1, 4 by dividing this by 2. But we'll stick with this, it still works. Okay? So it's got to go through that point and parallel uh, and perpendicular to these two lines. So this is going to be the direction vector. These two lines, these two vectors, sorry. Okay? So the direction vector goes in the bottom and the point goes on the top opposite signs. Now I could have multiplied this whole thing, all three parts, by 2 or negative 2 and it would have made the bottom look nicer as well. Okay. Now <clears throat> this next one is a little bit more complicated. So we want something that goes through the point 4, negative 1, 7 and parallel to the x-axis. So parallel to the vector 1, 0, 0, the i vector, i hat vector. Okay, so <clears throat> if we're going to substitute this into the symmetric form, well, we have a problem. 
x minus 4 over 1, not a problem. But y plus 1 over 0, that's a problem. You can't divide by 0. And same with the z-coordinate. So it's not possible to get a symmetric form when one of the direction vector uh, coordinates or more are 0. We can get part of a symmetric form. But for this one, you have to think about this now. Okay, so something that is parallel to the x-axis. Well, in two dimensions, okay, so in two dimensions, I can draw this out here. So there's the x-axis. Something parallel to the x-axis has a fixed y-coordinate. So say that goes through 4 on the y-axis. Then something parallel to the x-axis is going to have the equation of y equals 4. Okay, so we don't actually write anything for x because x is any real number. Well, on this one, because it's going to be parallel to the x-axis, x can be any number, but because it has to go through that point, y has to be negative 1 and z has to be 7. Okay, so y equals negative 1, z equals 7, and x is any real number is the equation of that line as best as possible in symmetric form, but it's not a real symmetric form. Okay, so you need to look for that in some of the questions that we're, we're doing when the direction, coordinates of the direction vector are zero. All right, uh, that's it for this one.